Hey guys, I'm Ron Carpenter, and I'm so glad that you're watching Ron Carpenter Television. You're probably saying, why do they have the huge word influencers behind them? Because we're talking about prayer. Can you really, right here, from your car, from your house, from your closet, from your shower, wherever, can you really influence heaven? Stay around, we're gonna find out. Turn in your Bible to Luke 18. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Jesus is already presupposing right here that you can run out, you can exhaust your emotional investment in prayer. If you just pray and pray and pray and pray and nothing ever happens, Jesus is acknowledging that people are praying and nothing happens and they can lose heart. He acknowledges that. But then he immediately takes us into a courtroom setting because he's trying to communicate why the prayer is not working. Verse 2. There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow trouble me, troubles me, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out to him day and night? Here's what Jesus is saying. He says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Why are we praying for 10, 15, and 20 years and still hadn't seen nothing happen? We're going to talk about it. Father, bless you, the reading of your word. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. You know what our custom is? Tell your neighbor both sides. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> How many of you have ever been moving and you run up on that piece of furniture or the refrigerator or that washing machine or that couch that doesn't fit through the door? Oh, don't that just make your day? Yeah, when I run up on that and I have to get saved about six times. <laughs> I hate moving. And it is our tendency when that couch that will not fit through the door gets stuck in the frustration of the day and we're already exhausted, it is our tendency to just push harder. And sometimes we just push and we push and we shove it and we put that shoulder in and we get our hips but. Instead of just walking around the house and coming through on the other side and looking at what's stopping it. So we exhaust energy when all you needed was an answer. Sometimes you can just move this or pull this out or unscrew this for just a second, slide it right through it, screw it right back in. Sometimes just pop the door off the hinge for 30 seconds. Slide it through, pop the door back on the hinge. But we never took the time to find out what will help me get the piece of furniture through the door. We just keep shoving. That's kind of like prayer. When I was looking for an analogy, I said, that's a good one. We just pray in and nothing's happening, just pray harder. Well, Jesus says, admittedly, there's going to come a time you're going to say, what's the use? What's the use? He admits that. And the thing, the thing I love about Jesus is, is he knew it. And, and what I've tried to bring to the table, and I think, this, I think this is life-changing, honestly. That's why I get so animated and so passionate. Even though this is teaching, I, I get excited and end up preaching it. It's because I love answers. I love answers. When there's something God tells me that is supposed to be happening and it's not happening, you need to know what kind of guy I am. I'm going to find out why. Because either God's lying or there's something I don't know. 
And since God is not a man that he should lie, and the Bible says it's impossible for him to lie, then there's something I don't know. There's something keeping the refrigerator from going through the door. And I've got to take the time to go around and instead of just shoving and shoving and exhausting more energy, I need to find out what's making it not succeed. Prayer's about getting involved in spiritual things and getting out of the earth and getting your voice up here where it can be heard, okay? The heavens are all about legalities, legalities. We were raised kind of like prayer is warfare. If you were raised in church on any level, we kind of look at prayer as warring. We're in a fight. But when Jesus starts explaining the way to get prayers answered, there is no warfare. There's no weapon in a courtroom. There is no rebuke in the devil. Well, I bind you. Say, boy, we could. You, we used to could cast the devil out and sling him all over the room and wring his neck and stomp his guts out and and cast him out of the kids and cast him out of the house and cast him out of the, the kitchen and cast him out of the cabinets. I mean, I came from people that talk more to the devil than they talk to God. <laughs> this lady never spoke to the devil. She spoke to the judge. She never even addressed him. Because Jesus is teaching us the truth that the heavens are, are all about legalities. She comes in, and this is the first thing <clears throat> that she says. She said, avenge me from my adversary. Avenge me from my, that word adversary means prosecutor. She's saying, defend me and avenge me from my prosecutor. The Bible says in the book of Job, chapter one, that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. What does a prosecutor do? He, he tries to prosecute in accordance with the law. So the enemy goes about your life gathering evidence of every mistake you made, every area where you missed the mark, every area where you're not living up to the faith that you've been called to, and he records every mistake that you make and everything you say and everything that you do. And when you come and you begin to petition the courtrooms of heaven, your enemy, the prosecutor, comes up and he tells the judge every reason why you don't deserve to have your prayer answered. Now, I'm talking to you straight out of the Bible. She says, avenge me from my adversary. In other words, avenge me from the one who is hurling all these accusations against me. Avenge me. The word avenge me means in accordance with the word. In other words, she says, there are things that you're promising me that's mine, but my enemy has stolen them from me. I'm not experiencing them. And I am asking you to go to my enemy and command him to give them back. I want you to know healing is yours. I want you to know joy is yours. I want you to know peace is yours. I want you to know a good night's sleep is yours. I want you to know rest is yours. Grace and mercy is yours. Freedom and deliverance are yours. All those things are yours. Protection is yours. God has purchased all those things. So if there's any of that that you don't see functioning in your life, God has promised them for you. There is a reason that they're not active. It's because you have an accuser who has legally entered the courtroom of heaven and he's saying, God, here's all the reasons why. Now the Bible says that Jesus is the only mediator between God and man. The word mediator means lawyer and defendant. <laughs> Woo, you got a real good attorney. Hallelujah. So he lets the accuser hurl the accusations. And then I said, I'm going to show you all this. I'm just giving you a little taste right now. Then your lawyer stands up, Jesus. And the Bible says he calls in a testimony. And the Bible says he calls in the testimony of the blood. I might just fall out in the spirit, just lay down on the... So he says, I'm calling somebody forth to speak, and he calls up the blood to testify. And the blood of Jesus says, because I was spilt for Ron Carpenter, every one of these accusations are false, and they've been covered in the blood. They've been forgiven. They've been washed away. They've been made null and void. And the Bible says that by the blood of the Lamb, the accuser of the brethren is cast down. The enemy who's come to prosecute you, the blood of Jesus Christ is a witness against him that everything he says is wrong, 
God has already forgiven you of it. Somebody shout hallelujah. This is powerful. Earth was never meant to operate apart from heaven. It was meant to operate just like heaven. And God put something on earth that was just like him to govern the earth the way that he governs the heavens. No doubt everyone wants their prayers answered. In this series, Pastor Ron teaches us practical steps on how to approach God directly. In your house, you represent the government of heaven. In a fight, you represent the government of heaven. You are a citizen of heaven and you are an ambassador here. So you got to go into that argument saying, what would heaven say? You got to go into that problem saying, what would heaven do? I am representing heaven, I'm not representing Ron. This seven message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. So in the courts of heaven, we have a righteous judge. God is the judge. He's the only judge. So we enter prayer. There's a court. Hebrews 12, I, I'm going I'm to talk about all this later. I'll go into depth on each one. It says there's a great cloud of witnesses. That's courtroom language. Judge, that's a courtroom language. The Bible says when we pray, make our petitions known. Petitioning the court. Petition is courtroom language. An accuser, a prosecutor, that's courtroom language. Jesus, a mediator or a lawyer, that's courtroom language. The testimony of the blood, testimony, that's courtroom language. Why did it take me 48 years <laughs> that when I pray, I'm entering a courtroom and there are rules to this courtroom and protocols that have to be followed. It's not a warfare. The protocols of a battlefield are different than the protocols of a courtroom. I don't have to beat you. All I got to do is get a judgment from the judge. If I can get the judge to rule in my favor, it's over. And that's what the courtroom setting is about. But we've got to understand how it works. Okay? Now, I want to read you what heaven looks like. <clears throat> Daniel was a prophet. And in Daniel 7, God let him peer into heaven and see what heaven looked like. I think you're going to be surprised. Daniel 7, throw that up if you would. A fiery stream issued. Whew. And it came forth before him. Listen to this. A thousand thousands ministered him. These are angels. <laughs> 10,000 times 10,000. He said, I don't even know how many it was I saw. The court was seated. Oh my. I thought they were going to be dropping grapes in my mouth and playing harps and stuff. The court was seated and the books were opened. What books? Heaven is a court? There are an innumerable host of angels. The court is seated. God is the judge and he's opening a book. I got to find out what's in that book. <clears throat> Let's look. Psalm 139, 1 through 6, and then throw 16 through 18 up there. Oh, Lord, you've searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. Verse 3, you comprehend my path and my lying down. <clears throat> you are acquainted with all my ways, for there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you already know it. Verse 5, you have hedged me from behind, and you have hedged me before, and your hand is about, I'm about to run all over this building. You've hedged me from behind, and hedged me before, and laid your hand upon me. Verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, it is high, I cannot attain it. He said, God, you know a word before I speak it. He says, you have
have hedged me from behind. You are guarding my backside so my past can't sneak back up on me. He said, and you're going before me so that no enemy, no mountain, no adversity can stop me. And while I'm moving, your hand is upon me. You're behind me. You're in front of me. You're on me. God has got me surrounded on every side. He said, you know everything before I'm going to say it. You know every thought before I'm going to think it. He said, such knowledge is too high for me. I can't even stand it. Verse 16 through 18. Your eyes saw my substance before it was even formed. You saw me before I got here. And in your book, they are all written. What? The days. The days fashioned for me. In your book. There is a book of your life. Remember it said that he opened the books. Heaven is full of books because everything written in heaven has to take place on earth. There is a book about your life. Every word before you speak it. Every thought before you think it. There is a plan in place for your life, but it will not be up to God as to whether or not you experience it. It will be up to you as to whether or not you experience it. So now I come into the throne room of grace to make my petitions known. I'm petitioning the court. I got an accuser telling the judge why he should not answer my prayer. But I got a judge having the court be seated and open up the book. (laughs) The judge does not go by what he hears the accuser saying. He goes by what's written in the book. (laughs) And the Bible says all the days ordained for you were written in a heavenly place. So there's a plan in place when you make it right here on earth. Isaiah 46, let me read that right there. Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Now, when God says that, pay attention. Because God's saying, you need to know I'm distinct and there's nothing else like me. What is the distinction? Declaring the end from the beginning. You've got to understand God does not live in time. I know you cognitively may understand that, but listen to the way you pray. When you pray, you are praying as though the thing that does hit you is surprising God as much as it surprised you. God is eternal, which means time is inside of him. Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God. In other words, when the beginning of time started, God looked at it and said, you're late. Because he was already there. Moses came to a burning bush, picked by God to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Moses didn't know him. Moses said, who do I tell Pharaoh sent me? He said, you tell Pharaoh, I am sent you. God is a being that is in a perpetual state of I am. Yesterday he was I am, today he's I am, and tomorrow he's I am. So God says, I am distinct and I'm different because I know the end from the beginning. We start at the beginning and we go into the end cluelessly. God has already written your end. So if your book has 12 seasons or 12 chapters, God wrote chapter 12 first. And then he works his way back. You come into life and you start working your way forward. So God has already been and visited where you're about to go. That's why God can say, he who has begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. I used to think, how can God say that? How does he know it's going to be completed? Because God has already wrote the last chapter. So if he started something, that means he's already finished it. If God has started bringing you out of debt, that means you're already out of debt. 
If God has started making y'all fall in love, that means you've already fell in love again. If God has started turning things around, that means he's already turned the thing around. If that lump has started going down in your breast, that means it's gone. Hallelujah. If God, if he started it, he's already finished it. Because he goes to the end first and then works his way back. That's how we know Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good of those that love. How can God say that? Because God already wrote the last chapter with all of your mistakes in mind. So in the courtroom, there's a book of your life. And the judge gets to render a verdict. The dilemma is not what's written in the book. The challenge is getting what's in the book happening on earth. That's why I said, pray that your kingdom would come and your will would be done here as it already is. In heaven, it's already an is. On earth, it's a possibility. In heaven, it's finished. Why did Jesus hang on the cross and say, it is in other words, Jesus hung on the cross and said, everything that's been written in heaven, I just gave permission to happen in the earth. It is finished. Do you see how this works? This is Jesus. Listen to this. Listen. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, talking about Jesus, sacrifice an offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. Remember, he was only Jesus on earth in a body. In heaven, his name is not Jesus. What if I told you? His name is Word. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He said, a body you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. You weren't interested in the old religious way that they tried to have their sins forgiven. You prepared a body for me. And then I said, behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will. Even Jesus, there was a prescripted plan. Did you ever hear the times where they would try to get Jesus, they would try to coax him into doing things, and he said, I only do what my father says do. In other words, I came here to get the book and to the earth. Even Jesus had a book of his life in heaven, and he came to earth and says, that's what I'm here to do. I'm not here to be coaxed by you. I'm not here to be ruled by my emotions. I'm not here to get mad and go off the air. I am here to do what is written in that book. That's the blessed life. The blessed life is what's written in the book. Earth was never meant to operate apart from heaven. It was meant to operate just like heaven. And God put something on earth that was just like him to govern the earth the way that he governs the heavens. No doubt everyone wants their prayers answered. In this series, Pastor Ron teaches us practical steps on how to approach God directly. In your house, you represent the government of heaven. In a fight, you represent the government of heaven. You are a citizen of heaven and you are an ambassador here. So you got to go into that argument saying, what would heaven say? You got to go into that problem saying, what would heaven do? I am representing heaven, I'm not representing Ron. This seven message series is available for your gift of $40 or more. Call now and we will include free shipping and an MP3 download card. Call now or visit roncarpenter.com or write to the address on your screen. that you're enjoying this. You know what, as I've been studying and preparing for these messages, I learned a lot. Um, really, I, I gotta be honest with you, I told some people not long ago, my whole prayer life has changed. And uh, I'm 50 years old. 
but but I just saw God just you know really shift the way I thought and the way I approached prayer. I hope the same is happening for you. I told somebody the, the other day also in the same conversation. I said, you know, I I see like things that I'm praying. God just answering them. It seems like the answers are coming so much more quickly because it is about legalities. And when you understand the courts of heaven your prayers can get answered. I hope that you've been enjoying it. You know what? I want you to connect with me further. Facebook, I want you to connect with me on Twitter and Instagram. We're saying something all the time. We're getting prayer requests all the time. Sometimes I just speak prophetically. Sometimes God just leaves me to pray for a certain thing. And we can develop a deeper relationship with you than we can just here. So if you would, go on and follow on all of those social media sites because we're doing something all the time. Clips from messages that may be an encouragement from your day. Who knows? But I believe God will design it to be especially what you need. I also want to take this time as wind out here to ask you for your continued support. We are just in the most amazing place of opportunity. I love opportunity. Something I can't stand is when I feel like I have no opportunity. But when opportunity comes, here's the shame. You don't want opportunity to come and you don't seize it. And uh, we're in the Bay Area, just bought some more time locally, you know, a reach of over 8 million people just in the Bay Area, 97% unchurched mission field right there. And uh, we're doing some new programming there. We're picking our spots. Most of you know we're on all over the world. Now we've begun to translate not only in Spanish, we're on 60 different stations in Spanish-speaking nations. Did you know that? And not only that, but we are beginning now to also translate into Chinese and even begin talks with uh, doing some things in Russian. It's just amazing. I mean, this is big time stuff, getting the gospel to people in their known language. It's amazing. Would you help us? With those of you who've been given many for months, many for years, given so long, would you continue to give? Would you think sacrificially? Would you ask God what he would have you to do? Those of you who may have never forgiven, may have never given, let me, let me reach out to you just a second. If something blesses you, would you consider keeping that process going? Whenever something blesses me, I try to turn around and bless back the thing that's blessing me. If something enhances my life and makes it better, I try to take a portion of that betterment and turn around and bless the thing that caused me to get better. If this has been a blessing you, there are a lot of people, a lot of skill sets, a lot of technology, a lot of equipment that it takes to go in just to put this right there where you are. If it has been a blessing to you, would you consider sowing a seed back into this ministry right now? Whatever it is God would ask you to do, whether it's a one-time gift or whether it's to become a monthly partner and walk out this relationship with us, we believe this is good ground and we have great opportunity. I'm asking you just consider what God would have you do and ask Him and I trust your heart in the matter. I'm believing God is going to do great things in your life before I see you again. Keep believing, hold on, keep praying, keep doing what you know to do. And I'll see you again real soon. God bless. Join us every week for another exciting message from Ron Carpenter. And until then, visit us online at roncarpenter.com and discover encouraging resources to help you reach your greatest potential in your Christian walk. And when you visit, consider partnering with our ministry team to help us take this life-changing message to the world. Our goal is to take the message and ministry of Ron Carpenter to a worldwide audience, but we can only do it with your help. And don't forget to connect with Ron every day through social media. Thank you so much for being a part of this ministry, and we'll see you again next time for another challenging message with Ron Carpenter.